friends, today I am going to unbox my new almond cow and I will share with you seven reasons why making your own alternative milk is better for you and better for the planet. Also, I'm going to actually make almond milk with you here today and show you exactly how to use the almond cow. And then at the end, we'll go ahead and taste the milk that we make and compare it to the typical shelf milks that I've been buying and using in my home. So we'll actually get to see how the almond cow almond milk compares to those shelf brands. If this is your first time here, this is Natural Living with Zanana. I'm Zanana Rose, I'm a nurse and health expert, and I like to share information, tips, and product reviews to help you live a more healthy, sustainable, natural, and non-toxic lifestyle. Basically, I like to do the research for you so that you don't have to. And then I can bring you great products like this that I have researched and learned about and just share those with you here. So let's get right into it and open this almond cow box. Let's see what is inside. So first off, I pulled this brush out. Clearly that means that there's a milk jug that the almond cow comes with when you buy the starter set. But here's our first item. First, it comes with a bag of whole grain oats and these are organic oats. It says for milking and breakfasting and it says they are organic, certified gluten-free, USDA organic, and glyphosate residue free. And it looks like it comes in a package that is pretty biodegradable. On the back, it looks like it has a milk recipe that you can use to make milk in your almond cow as well. So let's see what's next. They packaged this in here pretty tight, which is excellent because that means that they used the least amount of packaging possible to ship these items to us. So next we have coconut shreds for milking and baking. Again, they are non-GMO, organic, and glyphosate residue free. It even tells us the country of origin on the back of it. These come from Indonesia. I don't know myself what that means. If any of you know what that means, then leave a comment down in the comment section. And if you own an almond cow or an, have made your own alternative milk, then let us know and give us any tips or insights you have about that. We love hearing from you in this community and it's just great to have your comments and feedback as well. So chime in guys. And again, on the back of the bag, they've got an ingredient for making coconut cashew milk, it looks like. So that would be delicious. And then last but not least, we've got the almonds. So the almonds, again, another three pound bag. They're all three pounds. This one's for milking and snacking. They are bee friendly, non-GMO, and USA grown almond. They are certified by the Pollinator Partnership, which is actually a bee friendly organization that makes sure that the almond farmers are using best practices when they're farming their almonds. It says glyphosate residue free and non-GMO. All of their products that they sell are from almond cows. One of the many things to love about the company for sure. And then again on the back there is the almond milk recipe. And this is actually the recipe that we are going to use today. Here is the big box. I'm sure this contains our almond cow. On the front it says almond cow, the plant-based milk maker, and then with better ingredients sourced for you, coconut shreds, almond, cashew pieces, whole grain oats, some of the bags that we just pulled out. On the other side it says wave goodbye to shelf milk. That's what this is all about here. Share what you create at almond cow. And then on this side it says make better milk faster and it actually tells us exactly how to do it. And that's what we're gonna go through today here on this video. So as we open it up, we see that the packaging is recyclable, so that is excellent. And then we pull out our almond cow. It does look like it has a single use bag. I don't love that. I'm not sure why they put that on there, but that is a drawback. 
but at least it's only one single use plastic bag. So that is good. And next we've got a little thank you with a lot of information about how to use the almond cow. Uh, super quick and easy instructions about cleaning it and what to do with your pulp, how to clean your jug, and about the ingredients. And then we've got the plug, so we will need that today. Last but not least, you get a little almond cow sticker. Very cute. The last thing in the box is our jug. And here is the milk jug, you guys. Isn't that sweet? I love it. So it's got a nice, easy to use lid. Hopefully this is a good type of plastic to use for these lids. I didn't look into that at all, but I would imagine given the sustainability and what they're doing with the rest of their packaging, that this would be a plastic that is pretty safe or doesn't have as many unsafe, toxic components to it. I'm guessing I'm gonna wanna wash this out with a little hot soapy water before I use it. I will also wash out the almond cow as well before we get started with making the recipe. So let's just talk about the seven reasons why making alternative milk is better for you and me and better for the planet. Almond Cow has a lot of really great information on their website and I will put links to those in the description. They have a big page about sustainability and a sustainability report that they've created. You can download that and take a look at it. There's lots of good information on the website, but I'm just gonna summarize it for you here. And reason number one is that it reduces plastic pollution. An estimated 8 million metric tons of plastic ends up in the ocean each year, you guys. Shelf milk cartons are actually made of both plastic and metal. Surprisingly, only 9% of plastics are actually recycled. The rest of it just ends up polluting our earth. These are the two shelf milks that we have been using on a regular basis, and most of them come in packages like this. So you can see that it's this Tetra Pak carton, which can be recycled, but not many of them actually do end up getting recycled. And the same with the nut pods, and then you see that the tops are totally plastic. So this part does not get recycled at all. The other brand that we have been using in our household is Califia. And Califia comes in a plastic container that is recyclable, but again, only 9% of plastics are actually recycled. Getting something like the almond cow reduces this plastic pollution tremendously. In fact, according to Almond Milk Cow, you can actually prevent 5,000 plus single use cartons like these from polluting the planet. Number two is when you own an almond cow like this, you actually produce less CO2 than in the manufacturer of those shelf milks. And you get more almonds per cup of your almond milk than the shelf milk almond milks. Almond cow almond milk has 21 almonds per cup and shelf milk has about three almonds per cup. So big difference there, you guys, and so much more nutrition if you have that many more almonds in your almond milk. And that brings me to the next reason that the almond cow is better than the shelf milks, and that is that you know what's in your almond milk. You get to choose your ingredients, you know the source of your water, and you don't have all the extra ingredients, the fillers, even things like carrageenan, which isn't as much of a problem here in the United States anymore, but in other countries, carrageenan is still added to some of the alternative milks. So that is something to look out for because it is very unhealthy for our digestive system. And then next, almond cow ingredients are organic, non-GMO, they are pesticide residue free, and like we said, the almonds are verified by the pollinator partnership so that we know that these farms are bee friendly. Reason number five is that you get to use the entire almond. Who knows what happens to the almonds that are left after making these shelf melts? They're probably just thrown out and maybe not even composted. When we are making milk with our almond cow, 
we get to use the almond pulp to make yummy things like cookies and granola and tarts, oatmeal, and so many other things. So you're getting to use the entire almond, which is so much less wasteful and is actually saving you a trip to the store because you don't have to buy almond flour or granola, for instance. The sixth reason that owning an almond cow is more sustainable is that you get to actually send this back when you are done using it. So instead of throwing it out, you can actually send it back and they will refurbish it, reuse it, or even recycle it. So that is super cool. This is what we love to see because again, you guys, we vote with our dollars. The things that we choose to buy tell these companies and tell other companies that this is the type of the thing that we want, that we are willing to invest in. These types of recycling programs make the companies responsible for the products that they are using. So they have to figure out how to dispose of this product. That's just excellent. I love that about Almond Cow. And last but not least, number seven is Almond Cow. Almond milk is super easy to make. So they have mastered this system. You can make five to six cups of almond milk in just a few minutes and the cleanup is super easy as well. This almond cow starter kit comes with the almond cow, it comes with the glass jug, bottle brush to clean your bottle, and it comes with these three items, the three pound bag of almonds, organic oats, and organic coconut. The whole thing is $259 for all of that, and they do give you a $10 off coupon. I have put a link in my description, so if you're interested in purchasing this, then you can go ahead and grab that there. I think it's a really good price and eventually it's gonna save you money because you won't be buying the shelf milks like you are. Most people go through two to three of those a week depending on whether you're using creamer or just milk. When you add that up, it's a lot of money and I think this will save you in the end not to mention how much you're saving in pollution. So before we get into the recipe and starting to make the almond milk, I just want to encourage you to share this video if you know someone who might be interested in this type of information, because sharing this video and liking the video is how we get this information out to more people. So you can help with that mission. So hit the like button, share it with anyone you know might be interested in this information. And if you love videos and information like this, then definitely subscribe, hit the little bell so that you get notified when the next episode comes out. If you love unboxing videos for great companies like this, I do have a playlist of more unboxing videos and I'll put the link to that up here as well or you can find it at the end of this video. So be sure to check it out. So before we get started with making our almond milk, I'm just gonna take these over to my sink and I'm gonna wash them out with the hot soapy water and then I will be back with you in just a moment to make the almond milk. So this is the recipe that I am going to use today, just a straightforward, simple almond milk and you use either one cup of unsoaked almonds or you can use half a cup of almonds that have been soaked in water for at least four hours or overnight. I didn't do four hours. I didn't have time to do that, so I did put them in some hot water, hopefully to expedite the process. But Almond Cow does recommend that you soak your almonds for a premier almond milk, so I wanted to try that, of course and you put in a quarter teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of vanilla, and then you can do sweetener. They say maple syrup or three pitted dates, but I'm actually gonna put in a little monk fruit because as you know, I like to do mine sugar-free. So then we will proceed to make the almond milk. But before we do, I just wanna show you a couple other things on the website. You can see that they have a lot of recipes here. We have all the milk recipes here, lots of amazing looking recipes, cold brew chai milk, cocoa almond milk. There are just plenty, plain coconut milk. And then up at the top, things that you can make with the milk, pulp meal recipes and pulp recipes. There's also a creamer recipe here at the end, which I intend to, to buy because as you know, we like to use a 
alternative milk creamer. So I'm excited to try making this in my almond cow as well. But the pulp recipes, guys, oh my goodness, this is amazing. So what you have left in your almond cow, you can make all of these recipes with it. Berry oat bars, oh my goodness, that looks incredible. Cashew butter cookies looks yummy. Even some whole grain oatmeal, even ricotta cheese. Oh my goodness, and look at these beautiful tarts that you can make. I am excited to try that sometime too. The options are endless. I can't believe how many things. You can even turn your pulp into flour. I'm so excited to get into this and see what I can do with my pulp. Even granola, so that's exciting as well. So that's just a sampling of what you can find on the website, but let's get right into making our almond milk. So everything is washed and clean. And you can see that almond cow comes with this canister. This is where we're gonna put our water and I will fill it with water in just a few minutes. And then it also comes with this little container for draining your pulp, holding the canister while you're adding your ingredients. This is where we're gonna be putting all of the ingredients and this goes into the almond cow. And then this is the top of the almond cow and it has this blade, it's actually not that sharp, but this is what masticates the pulp so that it turns the almonds or whatever nuts, seeds, or grains you're putting in here into your alternative milk. So it's not that heavy, it's pretty easy to handle, but it's nicely put together and it feels very sturdy and it's awesome, gorgeous stainless steel. So I love that about this product not much plastic at all just this holder cup that we have here so let's add all of our ingredients as you can see i've been soaking the almonds again you don't have to soak the almonds but they recommend it and i did soak mine for a few hours so i'm just going to drain these now and then we will add it to the little canister i started out with half a cup of almonds and you can see that they have expanded to just about one cup and the one thing that I was wondering is if I should have used the water in this container. So I'll have to write to Almond Cow and ask them about that. If anybody knows that who's watching this video, then please let us know down in the comment section because I thought, well, there's probably some nutrients and things in there that maybe would be beneficial if we just kept it. So I've put my almonds in there and then we're going to add a quarter of a teaspoon of salt. I love this Redmond real salt. It's my favorite kind of salt. You don't have to add the salt to the almond milk, but it does make it last longer in your fridge. So it is a really good idea to go ahead and add it if you want it to stay fresh longer. And then we're gonna add a teaspoon of vanilla. Now again, you don't have to make vanilla. You could totally make plain almond milk, but I like the vanilla one and oh my gosh, I can smell it already. It smells so good. And then I have this monk fruit sweetener. You can also use the maple syrup or any other sweetener that you like. I love this stuff. I'm just going to put a few drops in. We don't need too many and I'll readjust that depending on how it turns out this time around. And so then you just take the top and the trickiest part is getting the blade down into the canister once you already have the almonds in it. So you kind of just have to wiggle it down into the container. There we go, I got it. So just to show you, there is a Min Max line that is on the side of the inside of the canister. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my purified filtered water into this canister and I'll be right back. Okay, so I have my water inside of my canister. I put it a little more towards the minimum because I do like a little bit of a creamier almond milk. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with that. Now I'm gonna pour the vanilla into here and then I will secure the lid on the top, it's got a little prong thing here on the handle that you just secure it into. And then we'll plug it in. 
had to use a little extension cord so that I could do this at my island. One thing I didn't do in my kitchen is put a plug in my island. Something to think about if you are designing or remodeling your kitchen. I totally recommend having an outlet in your island. It just makes so much sense and is very convenient. So now that we have it plugged in, we can see the top has a little green light. It's ready to go. And there's a little picture of the almond cow sitting on the top. So we just press that button. I'm gonna do that now. It's gonna make a little bit of noise as it works. Okay, it looks like it's done. The light is solid again on the top. I didn't have you listen to the entire cycle. It did go through three little cycles and then it finished and it really was not very long, you guys. So that is just amazing. So now we can take off the lid. Ooh, it's like frothy milk inside. Look at that. There we go. Obviously you wanna make sure you have clean hands when you're doing this, which I do. And here is a little bit of pulp on my blades. And then this is what it looks like inside. Wow, pretty amazing. So you wanna set this into your little container here and just let it drain. So you can leave it there for about 10 minutes or so so that it can drain. And then we'll add what comes out of the pulp back into the milk. I'm just gonna rinse my hands really quick and I'll be right back. I decided to bring back one of my Marley's Monsters unpaper towels. If you haven't heard of Marley's Monsters, it's such a great sustainable household company. And I do have a video where I unboxed my package from Marley's Monsters. So I'll put a link to that up here so you can check it out as well. But these paper towels are fantastic, unpaper towels, I should say. And I love using them around my kitchen. So I'm gonna put one here just in case I need it for the rest of the video. So we're letting this strain. I'm gonna go ahead and grab a glass for my milk and we'll pour some milk into a cup. I will also bring out a cup of my almond milk that I have been using and we'll do a taste test to compare the two of them. Okay, so before we test the milk, I just wanna taste a little bit of the pulp because like we said earlier, we can use the pulp for so many things. And I'm just gonna taste it to see what it's like here. Tastes a little bit plain, but also a little bit sweet. It's actually really good, you guys. I totally like it. Mmm, delicious. So I'll definitely be saving that. And I'm gonna make the banana nut muffin recipe that is in the recipe section of the website. They have so many great recipes. This is the almond milk that we have been using, just the Kirkland brand unsweetened almond milk. It does not have carrageenan in it, but it does have a lot of vitamins, it has sunflower lecithin, locust bean gum, and gelin gum, a bunch of other things in it. It is organic almonds, so that is a plus. Organic almonds are hard to come by. And here is what it looks like. So it's somewhat thick. It's a little bit yellowish, goldenish. Maybe that's from the vanilla. And now I'm gonna show you inside of my canister I don't know if you can see that, but there is a lot of foam on the top of my almond milk. It's really cool looking. I'm gonna pour a little bit of the milk into here. As you can see, it's a little bit more white than the Costco almond milk. So let's do the taste test. It smells good. I feel like I'm tasting wine here. Mmm, really good flavor, very almondy. It has a good consistency. I was a little worried that it was gonna be too thin because I had read that and watched on other people's YouTube videos about almond cow that they thought it was a little bit thin, but I actually like the thickness and the consistency of this almond milk. Now, I also read that it could separate in the fridge, so you may have to shake it up each time you are pouring it for yourself. So that is just something to note. Now let me taste the Kirkland almond milk and see how it compares. 
Whoa, really different flavor. This one tastes a little more like cardboard. I have to say the almond cow milk is so much better, you guys. I'm so excited because clearly I just invested in this device and I had no idea how it was gonna turn out. Now granted, I did put a little bit of sweetener in here, not too much. I don't think it's enough to change the flavor. I just think this has a much better flavor. And again, like we were saying earlier, we have no idea how much real almond is in this milk. And it can be as little as three almonds worth of almond and the rest can be water. So another great reason for making your own almond milk, like we said before, you know what you're putting in, you know how many almonds are in it, and you know that it's more nutritional and fresher for you. Wow, really good, you guys. I totally love it, and I'm really happy with my purchase. I hope that you enjoyed this video and this information about the almond cow. Again, I have lots of links in the description, so check those out, especially if you're interested in getting one for yourself. Clearly, so many reasons to invest in this device. Now, I have heard that you can make almond milk with your Vitamix. I might try that in another video just to see how it compares to this. I never even thought of it. I understand that this is a lot easier and neater and tidier. You can see how quickly and easily I made this milk. Oh, one more thing before we go, let's go ahead and try to pour the milk into the bottle and see how that process works. Hopefully I don't spill it everywhere. Nope, looks like it's very easy to pour into the bottle has a nice pour spout, pours easily. Here comes all my foam at the end. Now I will probably use a spatula to get the rest of it out. And there is more milk in the little plastic container. There we go, we've got our little jug of milk that's ready to go for tomorrow. There you go, guys. That is today's unboxing video. I sure hope you've enjoyed this information. And if you have, be sure to hit the like button, hit the little subscribe button and the bell so that you get notified for every single episode that comes out. I'm so happy that you are here with me today. I really appreciate you in this community and here's to your very best health. Cheers, everyone. I'll see you again very soon.